welcome to the MMO show. The show all about MMOs. With your host, Brent Copeland. Download from iTunes. Or watch the video at youtube.com slash Brent Copeland. And now, your host, Brent Copeland. So, howdy folks, just getting the show rolling here, I'm Brent Koblen, and uh, this is the MMO show, where we're going to talk about uh, MMOs, and in the process, make one, so I'm going to be looking at y'all's comments on the videos, and the ideas behind uh, these MMOs, and what I plan to do. Sorry, turn down the audio just a little bit. Because that's kind of loud. <laughs> anyway, uh, I did want to give an update on the Indiegogo. We are at 113%. Yay us. And uh, it only has like seven more days, six or seven more days on it. So if you're interested in joining up, just look in the description of the video to the link. And you can get access and other fun stuff involved with it. Um, I did uh, purchase the Hero Engine software and I've started um, looking around it. I've looked around the the uh, generic kind of MMO that they give to you and it's really kind of crazy what just out of the box they give you as a, a demo. So now it's to start it all over and start my own MMO got the burp seats today sorry and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun so I can't wait to do that there is a lot to it so I'm a, a little uh, worried that uh, it's gonna take me some time to get in there uh, but my goal is to focus on uh, kind of log in and like the first starting village area to try to get uh, uh, people who backed it in as fast as possible so you're not waiting you know six months to get into um, the MMO that you backed because uh, I appreciate you know backing it and I want to put y'all in as fast as possible and of course you'll probably go well there's not much to do in here but that's okay we'll we'll work on the rest of that as we go along uh, I did have a lot of uh, questions uh, this show, I'm going to talk mostly about classes, um, so we'll get to that. Uh, before that, uh, we do have some comments from the uh, last episode, so I want to get to those. Uh, Honored Knight 034 says, uh, so gear-based progression instead of level-based. I've seen it done well in the past. Uh, but it can run into the pay to win problem if if items can uh, freely be transferred between players also if they're going to be crafting merchant based characters how are you going to handle the gear progression without it seeming artificial like how a dark steel hammer is better than a steel hammer uh, to get around these issues I would suggest a skill based progression with skill advancement being activity based or advancement being time based and to get around pay to win you could have certain kinds of equipment that have skill requirements but deviate from uh, the basic style of play thus you are rewarding veteran players without penalizing new players who wish to join their high level friends uh, that's a very interesting and uh, a lot of information there uh and I do think it would probably be more skill-based system than even item-based. Um, for example, I don't want their... One of the things I always hate about MMOs is I would build this kind of storyline around my character and I would say, this guy is uh, loves hammers. So he's going to fight with hammers. But inevitably you run through the game and either you don't find good hammers or the hammers are 
you know, few and far between. And ultimately, you go on that raid and the sword drops. That's twice as good as any hammer you have access to. So you're forced to use a sword when you want to use hammers. You're the hammer guy. Hammer time. Dun, 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 dun. And so I definitely want to avoid that. So I, I kind of see it currently. And this is like a lot of this is just going through my head. And as I kind of drill down on different things uh, and uh, we'll probably get more, we'll do a whole show based on this, but just kind of uh, my thought is that as you, you play the game, if there's a, particular weapon you like to use uh then you will skill up in that and that will those points you skill up in in that weapon will be better than you know if you get a an axe and you're not skilled in axe at all and the stats on it are twice as good as your hammer stats you're still not going to have better chances to attack with that axe because it's just not going to you're not going to have the skill to use it and I think also, uh, I think there'll be bonuses on if you are, like I, I think being expertised in a weapon, I think there's probably some sort of degradation of skill used if you don't use a weapon. I, I don't want it to be this where like, okay, time to work on swords. So you use the sword for three hours and it's like, okay, time to use the hammer. And then you max out all your skills. Don't want that either. So it may be kind of like a thing where it's like, you pick a weapon and as you use it, your skill goes up. As you use some other weapon, that skill goes down uh, and that weapon goes up. Um, and that's all the mechanics there are going to have to be dealt with and figured out. But in essence, I don't want you being good at every single weapon in the world. Now, but maybe you're an arms master. That could be and we'll get more into classes uh, later in the show. But uh, so you're an arms master. Well, you need to know all the, these different weapons. Well, there's some skills down in trees, you know, skills with the arms master class that says, hey, you can now be, you know, maybe you don't degrade in skills or you're de you degrade, you know, 90% uh, slower than anyone else who's not an arms master. So all suddenly that opens up something kind of cool that, hey, you're the only class that can use 10 different weapons and stay really good at those 10 different weapons. Okay, so something like that. Just, uh, uh, and that's, we'll get, like I said, we'll get more detailed about um, the kind of the skills and uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, let's see, Eric Leavitt says, people won't have an end goal without levels. And once they get everything done quickly, the game will be done for them and they'll quit. For the people who are just there to level up, um, sure. Like, if that's all they're there for is to level up and, and that's all they want, then uh, yeah, they'll, they'll quit and um, that's okay. I'm definitely not saying I'm making an MMO that every single player in the world is going to love and play. I'm making an MMO that I think uh, needs to be out there. And if 100,000 people play it, I would consider that a huge win, you know? Um, so, but but I kind of disagree. I think that's kind of what uh, WoW and the other MMOs have trained you in. They've, they've said, we've got to put you on this treadmill to keep you playing. And that treadmill is levels. Uh, and then it's, it's, you know, it's, daily quests it's we want you to keep grinding every day and feel like you've got to come back or you're losing out well i just like a a good book i i think in you know an mmo is more than just that grinding i think it's uh i think there can be a storyline that uh you'll want to come in I'll, and i also think that there's there's uh, part of that is you lose out on half the game leveling up if if uh, most of the time you don't even experience the leveling up dungeons. Like, all these MMOs have dungeons that are, hey, this is for you when you're at 10th level. Go to this dungeon at 10th level. How many times do you just blow by all those dungeons 
and get all the way to the max level, and then you don't even see him. Like, you may run back and go, ha ha, this is fun, I killed everything in two seconds. Well, I don't want that. I want every dungeon to be open for you from day one. So instead of you having three dungeons at max level, you have 20 dungeons at max level. And so I think there will be plenty to do, uh, plenty more to do than that leveling grind. I think that's one of the main problems with the MMOs is the focus on that making you grind up those levels and thinking that's actually a fun part of the game. It's not... Um, and there's other ways to to kind of deal with that leveling. Like, like I think a lot of people think, well, leveling, you know, it, it's a shows you how long you've been playing. It it uh, rewards you for playing. And I think there's better ways to do it: achievements, uh, titles, in-game, cool things that actually separate you from other players than a level. Like, you can still play with this person, PvP with them, PVE with them both of them and you could have been playing for 10 years and then one and they're like man look at his uh armor it's got like all these cool metals on it or maybe you have a really awesome tabard or or a banner a banner man that comes along with you a retinue of people around you that don't even like they're not there for fighting they're not but they're like you're awesome you've been playing this game for 10 years and you've accrued a retinue how awesome would that be like you go around and you've got like a wagon train with a guy sitting there with with uh, beers and mugs and hanging out and it's basically a walking party like but you can only get this as you've worked up these people and they don't have any effect on the game like they're not gonna like like they're gonna be like have fun in the dungeon. We're going to be out here continuing the party, and we hope you live and come join us. But we know you will because you're a hero. Uh, maybe they have some quests uh, that come along or tasks or something cool like that. But otherwise, it's just that's the kind of stuff that I think people really dig and would get into in an MMO. So I think there's much more than levels. Good question, though. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And if uh, you're watching this live, uh, if you're having a problem with the stream, if you mouse over the video, a pop-up will come up with an HD symbol. Just click that to source, and it should fix the stream for you. But if you can't hear me, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, that, all that stuff will get fixed out. I'm streaming on beam.pro now. Uh, so be sure to go follow me over there so you know when this happens. Sorry, I was just reading chat, and I saw some people have issues, and I thought I would try to help them and stupidly i can't so uh steve giocolini that's horrible steve not your name my pronunciation every name. steve G giocolini 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 uh kind of strange which there yes yes it is sorry about that uh, I've been wanting to do the show for a while and I hadn't had time to do like an opening and I wanted to do an opening and I threw something together super quick. I didn't have anybody do the voiceover. So I used like one of those online voice things, super creepy, super weird, going to fix it in the coming months. But I think the, uh, content of the show is more important, uh, for now. So we'll get to that and I'll shave. I know that's my mustache is getting in my mouth. Uh, anyway, uh, Nikki Scarlet says, I would love to see some kind of explorer class alongside the hero and merchant. Sometimes when I play a game, it's literally, literally, literally just so I can explore its worlds and uh, get to know its characters and stories. And having to do all the grinding and fighting just feels like a nuisance. Uh, and I, I agree. I think that's awesome. And uh, I definitely would love to see some kind of explorer class. Um, I'll get more to the class stuff, like I said, in just a minute. Uh, Capricorn Cross says, Levels are a two-way street for me. On one hand, yes, it can restrict you, especially if you don't have much time to game. But I do love the accomplishment aspect of levels. When I hit my first level 50 on uh, FF14 ARR, uh, what's that, a Reborn, a Legacy Reborn or something like that. Um, that's Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I played that for 
first 10 levels. Uh, I felt like it was worth it. And then I was the man. On the other side, as Brent said, you have got to keep up with your friends if you just want to play with them. And sometimes that forces you to sit down and play, which can lead to getting very fed up and you putting the game away. Uh, Capricorn crossed it a lot more. I'm trying to keep these comments a little bit short so we can get to the meat of the show. Um, but I, I agree. Like I said, the levels, there's definitely... A reason for them, I just think that we can accomplish uh, what levels do in a better way. So, um, with that, I want to get into classes and uh, talk about this a little more. I'm not really going to so much get into each individual class, because for one thing, I don't know all the classes that will be there yet, and... Um, First off, how I, I th there's got to be a foundation kind of for where the classes start. I don't think it's good to just go, here's 4,000 classes, pick one. Huh? I think for the most part, when, when uh, we play MMOs, um, I think a lot of people kind of know what they want to play. I mean, I, yeah, there's some looking up and like going, yeah, yeah, that looks like a really good, cool class. But I think as you're talking to your friends and stuff and getting ready for an MMO, it's always like, um, are you going to be the tank or are you going to be the healer? Because you want to get your group so that you know your core players that you're going to be playing with, you have something to um, play with. And, and that sounds weird. Uh, you have a group to play with and you know you'll be a viable group for a dungeon and things like that. Uh, we'll talk about that later because I think that's a huge part of an MMO. And I want to see if we can kind of fix that whole uh, needing the the Holy Trinity there of of a um, you know DPS uh, priest tank or DPS healer healer tank, but it may not be a battle worth fighting. It may not even make sense to fight. It may be something like hiring hiring hirelings or something like that. But but uh, like I said, we'll we'll talk about that later. Today's classes. So currently, my thought is how I would like to do it. Is you, I, I really want there to be a sense of building your character. Like when you make your character, I don't want it to be 10 minutes or an hour of just picking your face, a class, and a name, and then moving on. Now, I don't know if I want to do this in like a you're making your class, or if I want to make it as in this is part of the game. So, but in essence, what I want you to do is come in. And, you know, build it off more like, okay, I come from um, humble beginnings. I'm the son of a merchant or I'm the son of a, a, you know, I'm a bastard child of a king. You know, like these kind of options where it's almost like these stupid, uh, no, I don't, even, I don't even want to say that, but like, you know, the Facebook, like, what are you? Are you a warrior or a fighter? Not to that degree, but you know what I'm saying? Where you're kind of building this backstory that builds what you are. But then I think it would basically get into, like, I, I think you would start off as, like, are you a villager? Are you, uh, do you go join the army? Are, are you a scholar? Uh, and those are kind of, like, your base classes. And, and kind of this would be the tutorial feel of the game at first, so where you're learning the game. Uh and so I don't know if you would start then and like, hi, I'm in the world, I'm a villager, and then walk around the villager. I think it'd be more like, you know, the tutorial, you know, maybe you start off as a villager, maybe a teenage villager, maybe even younger, and you go around and you learn about like, oh, it would be cool to learn how to fight, or it would be cool to make stuff, or it'd be cool to travel. And then as you figure out these different things, that's when you kind of pick your uh, archetype, you know, like basically you've got your, you know, am I going to be a priest of some sort, a healer? Am I going to be a fighter, warrior, blah, blah, blah? Am I going to be a caster, uh, like wizard or mage, uh, necromancer? Um, and then, then, so I think as you kind of work through the world, and this, this is kind of where I'm still in this, like, thinking and, and talking to myself sort of stage. 
I don't know how quickly I want this to happen. Like if it's just part of the building your character process or if it's uh, playing your character and uh, maybe even that's part of like you get points that are towards um, your skills. And once you work up skills, certain skills, it unlocks like new classes. Okay, and what I mean by this new classes is it wouldn't be like I go around fighting and I'm fighting a bunch of stuff with melee weapons. Maybe I put a lot of bow and plink some things. Um, it would also only be like, hi, you've unlocked the necromancer class. Would you like to be a necromancer or a Jedi? Ah, uh, uh, not like that, but it would be like, you've unlocked, a you know, a lot of weapons. And because of like, we kind of mentioned earlier in the question section about the degradation of skills or whatnot. Um, that's kind of an odd thing. It's like, you've unlocked the man at arms class would you like to you know move into that or would you like to continue on your current path uh i think that would be kind of a cool aspect maybe even if you i mean of course once you start reading the web and looking at the wiki uh you, you would be able to like pick a path and like okay i definitely want to get to swashbuckler so that means i've got to go uh a fighter and then i've got to go uh make boats and and then as i uh, make boats and i'm I've uh, also uh, done some smuggling stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's a rogue. Like, that's also how to be figured out. But then all of a sudden, like, Swashbuckler. So you could kind of work down this. Um, but the big thing is I don't want... Um, I don't want these classes to be like all suddenly, Hey, I'm a Swashbuckler. I can kill you, uh, warrior. Because I'm... Uh, a swashbuckler. Uh, I want the new classes to basically be as effective fighting and whatnot as any other class. But just be different. And I think this is a way to kind of make a bunch of different classes. And there may be people who are just like, I am in my starting class, which is basically in the army. Um, but I've worked my way up the army. Because in each class, I think there's kind of a path to work up into whatever it is. Um, you, you'll have these kind of sort of uh, level. It's it's a leveling system within a class, sort of. So like you basically ranks of classes. So it's not levels, but uh, you know if if you're a rogue and you get up high into the you know the thieves guild. Um, there's got to be things that you get for that. And it's not going to be like, you can fight better, but maybe you unlock uh, quests. I, I think that's basically like kind of figuring out that is kind of the key here. So what do you get at each of these sort of unlocks? And they're kind of like almost achievements too, right? So I've unlocked this. What do I get? And it's a forward progression. Like you, you can't really go back. Like once you decide to go for or maybe you can i don't know that's something to kind of look at uh, but uh you know once you become the master of the thieves guild are they just going to let you go back to being a thief ever again i guess so i guess that's a possibility uh, maybe it depends on uh what class you're in uh but i like see i, I see that's a natural progression of going from say a thief to, and maybe you start off as like a, uh, a street urchin uh, and then you become a, a thief and then from a thief you can either become a, a burglar uh, you're, you're basically specializing right these are almost like specializations um, that don't make you more powerful but open up different skills I think that's kind of what we're saying here and or maybe that's where you become the swashbuckler or you become an assassin right uh, and really be able to define your class down to as much as you want or as little as you want uh, through the whole thing. Uh, you know, you can become a, a scholar that then, you, hey, do I want to be a, a wizard? Do I want to be a mage? Do I want to be a necromancer? Do I want to be a cleric? Uh, do I want to be a, um, a traveler and map a cartographer? Right? That could be a class. 
Uh, and then you say, well, I want to be a wizard. Well, then you can become a wizard. Well, do you want to be a wizard of the frost or the, the fire or the whatever? And it just, and so we got to figure out all that and all the different classes. Um, and like I said, I, I want the classes to be all unique feeling. Like when you play that class, you don't just have, you know, fireball or ice ball, right? It's not. It's not one or the other if you're the ice mage or, or you're the fire wizard and they do the same thing, the same damage, and the same whatever, except for one freezes you and one does a little more damage. <coughs> I want you to feel like you're the ice wizard. And you know you're the ice wizard. All your spells do it and you're not going, well, maybe I want to be a fire wizard because, you know, their fireball does more damage. Uh, maybe if you want to do more damage then that's why you go the the fire wizard I guess but uh, uh, so there's like really take the classes and make a bunch of them so still going through there um I, I like uh, I, I want there to be some different classes though besides just those archetypes uh, something things that really really are are different like I really loved and I might just uh, I don't know if that's stealing an idea if you take it from another game or not but uh, I really like the idea of one of the early muds I played in <coughs> of there was this druid class and how you became a druid is you actually had to study with other druids this is a, a mud game um, so you would you know basically sit outside their big tree and the tree it had one quest and this was how you became a druid was to get a simple rose well, the only way to get a simple rose was for um, <clears throat> the head of the druids or a god to hand you one. There was no other way in this world. Uh, so how you did that was you sat there and you listened to these druids talk about their tenets and all their beliefs of what a druid was. And then you would, you would uh, basically take a quiz. But it wasn't like a, a, B, or C. It was like a philosophical quiz that you took with these other druids. And they would be like, well, I think you need to go, you know, keep listening and, and learning and, and, you know, doing whatever. Uh, also, they couldn't kill. Like, if you were a druid, you were not supposed to kill anything. So eventually, once you kind of pass this, like, philosophical quiz they gave you a simple rose or the god would come dark darkda darkda would come down and give you a simple rose and uh, then you'd turn that in and you would become a druid and these druids had a two powers that uh, no one in the game had one was resurrection and one was they had this teleport um, item that they could teleport to different places and set waypoints and teleport back and forth. They could teleport people. Uh, they also had one other ability was to unlock the uh, troll caves. One of the best places to get experience in the game was the troll caves. But the only way to get in them was to talk to a druid and uh, get them to let you in. But there was all these things that the druids had to take into account because they, were, they believed in, uh, you know, the world kind of like an equilibrium like the world had to like so if your party of people who wanted to go into the caves were um way too powerful uh then you weren't supposed to let them in if they were way too weak you weren't supposed to let them in because they didn't want you to uh they wanted you to be a match for the trolls and then, like if it's like okay this party seems to be like y'all are going to have a good fight and it's going to be an equal fight between you and the trolls have at it but I'm not going to res you if you die to this because it's an even match and so that was the other thing it's like they had this ability to res people but you weren't supposed to always use it 
Like, so people would send you messages to be like, hey, I died. Can you come res me? Uh, and you would go there because you could teleport to them and you'd be invisible so they can see. But you would start asking them, well, where were you fighting? What were you fighting? Um, and if they were killed because of something that was kind of unequal, like I was just, you know, wandering by this cave and I got attacked by an eye of the beholder and it killed, then you're like, okay, that's not fair. So I'm going to res you. But if it was like, sorry, man, that was an even fight. Um, and you died. That's just the way the world works. And people would death threats, druidic death threats. Cause no one likes being refused a res ever. Uh, so that's like a class that I would love to see with all those intricacies in there. I, I just don't know if that can work in, in a, uh, MMO these days, but maybe, maybe that'll be the GMs. The GMs will be druids and, um, and they could basically run quests and do stuff, but they would be within the world. So it'd be kind of, I think that might be actually a cool thing to do. So you kind of have a two tier, uh, GM system. One that's like, actually like just there to fix stuff. Uh, and then you have this kind of quest based class only, and they can help if like, there's other people not there and stuff. Um, sorry, my phone's going off the hook. People love these ideas and they're calling me up. Anyway, so that's a real, I guess, broad view, overview of classes and a little bit of the idea of the Druid class that may be a GM uh, class, but also maybe that's a way for role players and people playing the game to get into being a GM and things like that. Uh, so I... Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments of the video. I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Uh, that's at Brent Copeland on YouTube. Let me know in the comments um, what class you would want to see. It can go from all the way to a base class like Rogue to, you know, tear it down to whatever you think it, it could be. A, a um, what do you call it? A, uh, uh. A jailer, right? I mean, that could be a class. A jailer. I'm a jailer. Uh, and like what abilities would they have and things like that. So um, let me know what you think. Uh, any other questions about the MMO? Uh, next week, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about uh, the tavern. The tavern is going to be a big thing in this MMO and so I want to talk about it and we'll talk about the tavern on the uh next MMM show. Uh thanks for tuning in and I will see y'all later. I'm Brick Copeland and this has been the MMO show.